So here we are, arriving at Adam's calendar with the Bushman people and Michael Tellinger. Quite a beautiful vibration. Come with respect and honor. It's a beautiful time to reflect the ancientness of self. Who can it with you? Nice. Was gaan daar zo staan en een bikkie voor hem leesten. Dat is de North Stone. calendar stones and they are inside what is really a circle if you look on the google shot you'll see it was originally a circular structure there's some interesting things that happened coming in here which i'll talk you through the stone man originally stood over here and this is what he was removed by the government so they're the ones that desecrated this site uh, in 1992 the stone man stood here in line with the two central calendar stones, this pointer stone here, and then also the Horus stone on the other side. Um, uh, east. That's looking east at yep. the sunrise, yeah. Now, the, the mystery of the stone man has been a fascinating uh, tale of discovery. And Crater Mutwa started giving me very interesting and important bits of information over the last three years, um, which I'll share with you later because otherwise I'll be just jumping into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so that's the, the central stones <laughs> over there. This would have been east, uh, stone man facing east, looking at the sunrise over the two calendar stones. That tree, uh, that stone by that tree is north, that stone by that tree is south. And then the, the stone that marks the rise of the sun is the, is the sculptured Horus stone or the bird shaped stone just on the other side. All those stones are obviously fallen down so in one of the 3D reconstructions, when you lift them up that I did, it really starts to look quite beautiful. Yeah. Um, now, the interesting thing is, you follow me, and you stand in the middle, yeah, in the line. That's right. In between the two calendar stones. Now the reason they're calendar stones is because the setting sun on that side casts a shadow. This rock casts a shadow on this rock. So as the sun sets from the winter solstice, the sun sets over there and right between those two stones over there um, between those two it sets there, cuts across here and sets over there. And then it moves across and summer solstice it sits over there and the shadow hits that edge there and it stops and it moves back. So that's why it, we know it's a calendar and this is what John Heiner discovered after five years of research. And that's a, a phenomenal breakthrough <laughs> in finding what the government still believes to be just a bunch of random stones. Yeah. Um, no, well, the important thing here is that north-south goes right between the two, north, south, right between the center of the two calendar stones. So that's really important. Well, th these trees, no, no, not 400,000 years. Oh no, the trees are just uh, opportunistic growth. So they weren't yeah. here, they, they just, you'll find stones. trees, the, the trees like to grow near the stones because the birds perch on the stones, they poo down the side and because there's moisture and protection, the trees will grow there. Were these uh, stones, uh, uh, the fall in that way. Yeah. Or were they upright in, in the beginning? You see, you, you're seeing them leaning towards the edge. Most of the rocks, as you see, are actually leaning towards the edge down there. And the ones that were on the edge have fallen over. Mm -hmm. um, it's just through thousands of years of yeah. soil shift, slowly moving towards the edge, mm -hmm. slowly mm -hmm. falling over. Um, this piece here, incidentally, broke off here. So this belongs ah. up there. How long ago would that have happened maybe? Well, this gives us a very good indication if you go to look at the, the erosion on this edge and, uh, and the lichen that's grown over it. 
uh, when I've asked a few geologists to say, well, how much, how much time has passed for this to have eroded to this, to this point? And the standard answer is pick a number above 50,000 years. Mm. Um, so this, this site has been here for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is just yeah. one telltale sign how old this site is. Um, the, this lichen itself, this lichen only grows one millimeter per annum. So one little dot um, per annum. And this, these stones are covered in this lichen, layer upon layer upon layer. So just the lichen itself tells us that it's been standing here for a long time developing the lichen. Okay, so then you go, you face east, and what do you get east? In Egypt, um, the sign that marked the rise of the sun was the, was the Horus bird. And that's exactly what we find here. And that's what I discovered uh, one morning when we came here. It was covered by soil at the bottom, and we pushed the soil away, and we found it was carved in the shape of a, of a bird's head. The beak is broken off, but you'll see it's very distinctly. This is incredible, eh, Michael? Here's the Horus stone, there you can see it's about three meters long, there's the belly and there's the head carved, there's the neck. It's got a nice fat belly over there um, and that nose is broken off but if you stand this thing up it'll be absolutely awesome and when the sun rises It'll probably cast a shadow of the profile of this on the first calendar stone as it rises on the spray on the summer equinox or the spring equinox. So it's just beautiful. Um, and then this carved stone here, you can clearly see that that's carved to a point, very distinctly <laughs> carved to a point, or shaped to a point, together with all the, those two other big stones there. When you lift those up, they seem to line up with the rise of Orion over there which is aligned with the pyramids down in the valley. Yeah, that you, I saw the photo you, in, yeah. the, in the... Uh, that you whether gave. they are man-made pyramids or natural structures is unknown yet, but yeah. it's certainly a um, strange phenomenon. If any of you have got a GPS with you, you'll see it doesn't work inside here. Really? It, uh, it works just right outside. You step outside, it works perfectly. The moment you come into the circle, it stops to work. It works, but it shows mm. you nonsensical direction. Mm. Mm. So it completely loses signal. The same happens at the pyramids. The, when we were there looking at the pyramids and analyzing them we found we held four GPS's next to each other like this. Four people standing and each GPS gave you a completely different reading. But not just out by a few feet, out by you know, miles. So it clearly whatever energy is happening there scramble the information completely. The other interesting thing is, um, let me first t take you through that part there, which is, that's really the important sacred part of this. Um, and then I'll tell you about the energies that I've measured in here. Mm. There was a program on Afrikaans television here called, um, on CakeNet, called, called Onverklaarbar, which is unexplained. And they brought a psychic lady here. Um, not telling her anything about the site <coughs> and uh, she, they brought her here and she stood somewhere over here I wasn't here I, I was told this by Enosh the tour guide and uh, and she stood here and she just started to freak out she said I don't know what's going on here but this is a really strange place this is and then she said this is the oldest place on earth first words that came out of her mouth not knowing where she was or why she was here and uh, they filmed all this, this was all on television, in the program. <laughs> and she said, it's the oldest place on earth. And, and she said, these rocks were put here by, by people. But she said, but they weren't people. They were, they, they were from somewhere else, from another place. <laughs> they weren't from earth. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and then she said a whole bunch of other stuff. And then she turned around and she said, and there was a white, she said, there was a, there was a white, um, light or a white um, rainbow of light that they used as a source of energy for this and then she said and those rocks there were the were the actual source of energy for the site here so she just came up with all this weird information which falls into place with what we're finding with the measurements here mm -hmm. um, 
So Michael, why did the government take that stone away and what did they do with it? The, it's, it's at the entrance, uh, which we're not going to go to today because okay. that entrance is closed because okay. we came in through the back way. Okay. So it's the first stop normally as you come in through the gate, it's just a straight line in, mm. stop at the different places, stop at the stone man, um, and uh, it's got a plaque on it commemorating the opening of the Blue Swallow Nature Reserve. Mm. So they desecrated the site uh, and put a plaque on it and, uh, and that's okay. You know. <laughs> but spreading the information of its true yeah. meaning and importance is not okay. Mm. So, um, these stones here are really important because I'm going to just take you through a little what I believe would probably have been some sort of a, a, a ritual here. I'm not sure why it would have been a ritual, but clearly you can see this is a head. Yeah. Um, sure. This is a head that belongs to this body here. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think here we're dealing with Inanna. Inanna is, is, is encoded all over the site. Um, and that head it's got a sort of a sphinx shape back this is just cracked because it's probably lying on a hollow and um and lightning probably struck it so unfortunately the body is cracked now but we're going to hopefully try and reconstruct it when we get the right permits but if you lift this up and you put the head on top of it um i think when it fell over it fell over and the head probably hit that rock over there and then bounced back this way and then just lay there for a long time it was originally covered up to here just come it up to there. Don't tell anybody I dug it out. <laughs> um, and it's just beautiful. And so you got this little precinct here with those two strange shaped stones here. If you lift them up and you lift that up, um, this is like, it looks like a it's body. It's like an entrance. Mm. Well, it, it, it looks like a body. Yeah. So that rock was yeah. on top of these two rocks. So, yeah. so if you lift these up and you lift that one up towards you, um, you got this interesting little precinct that when you stand in, in the middle of it, once again you're right in the middle of the calendar. And it is here that I had the ladies that first told me that they were experiencing feelings of pregnancy or birth or, um, or uh, morning sickness and so forth. And, and I was sitting on that stone over there and one by one they came in here and they were all psychic ladies and they and the one would describe how she feels and the next one would describe how she feels and 